Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Minister James Pullian. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. To be a sanctuary. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Amen, 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 amen. I'm going to talk today, amen. Um, first and foremost, let us pray. Father God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We lift your name on high. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Lord, O oh God, for our daily bread, our daily portion. Thank you, Lord God, that we're able to come in and fellowship with one another, break bread with one another, with supplication in prayers, Father. Lord, we thank you on today, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you, O oh Father God, take front and center, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We invite your presence in and your power, Lord. <coughs> Without you, we're, we're not able to do anything, God. So we trust you and we rest assured that, Father, that if you said it, we'll do it. And if you do it, then we'll do it, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We rest in all of your power, rest in all of your love, O oh God, rest in all of your hope, rest in all of your faith. Rest assured, O oh Father God, that you, O oh God, have a purpose and a plan for us, O oh God. So we love you and we bless your holy name, God. We worship you, O oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, we decrease, Lord God, that you may increase. Let your power of the sanctuary of our minds, our hearts and our souls, O oh God, enter into us, O oh God, mightily, O oh Father God. God, rest in us, O oh God, mightily. Have your power and have your way, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, God, we plead the blood right now, God, over every blood washed believer, God, in the name of Jesus, over everyone on the prayer line, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, over everyone that watches this uh, Bible study on this uh, Monday night, God, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, over our family members, O oh God, over the ligaments, O oh God, and the members of your body, God, in the name of Jesus, God, O oh Father. Father God, have your way, God, in the sanctuary of our hearts, oh God. Let, oh Father God, the offerings that we offer up to you on our altar, God, in the name of Jesus, be altered according to your will, your plan, and your grace. Oh Heavenly Father, do it right now in the name of Jesus. We bless your holy name, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for being our hiding place and our refuge, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can run to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in the midnight hour and call upon your holy and right his name, God. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray right now, God, 
that the that that every word that I preach, God, oh God, every word that this man preaches, God, fall to the ground, God. But let the Spirit of the Most High God rise up and resurrect in me, God. Let it rejuvenate in me, O oh God, by your power and by your hand. And let the word that you speak, God, in the name of Jesus, break up the foul grounds of our heart. O oh God, go in and plant seeds, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Go in and plant seeds, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, let the water and end up partaking of your truth, God, be resurrected in us, O oh God. Rise us up in this last hour, God. Rejuvenate and replenish, God. O oh God, give us a spirit to refocus, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give us a spirit, O oh God, to restart our spirit, man, God, in the name of Jesus. God, help us to reframe the way we see things, God, in the name of Jesus. Let our minds and our hearts be renewed, God, in the name of Jesus. And have your way, God, in the name of Jesus, right now in the Bible study. Oh, God, do it right now. Serve the gift that sent us, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord God, we thank you, oh, God. Prepare us, oh, God, to be a living sanctuary. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So we're going to read, amen. And I want to talk today about a sanctuary, amen. Uh, in the Old Testament, the word, uh, I don't know how to say it in the Old Testament in the Greek or the Hebrew, but I know it means a holy and implying a distant between space that is sacred versus profound. And we're talking about a sanctuary, commonly referred to as the worship, a sanctuary where the Israelites offered up various, offered up their various kinds of offering and sacrifices to the Lord under the supervision of priesthood. As in offerings, as in English, however, there, uh, where the word sanctuary comes can refer, can sometimes refer to a refuge. There are two instances where the Lord refers to himself metaphorically as a sanctuary, a refuge, or faithful Israel's in to, to faithful to faithful Israel's Israelites in distress. Amen. So in the New Testament, it's a holy place means a sanctuary is in nine instances of all the book of Hebrews, and it also occurs three times uh, in, a, in a adjective for the temple as the holy place of Israel. Amen. We know that we uh, are, uh, we ask and invite God into the sanctuary of our hearts. Amen. That he may rest and rule and abide in our hearts. Amen. Uh, and so we have to uh, basically uh, deny ourselves and pick up the cross and follow after the Lord himself. Amen. We must cast off, uh, as we know, the children of Israel when Moses went to the mount to speak to the Lord face to face, amen, when we say face to face, mean that he was as a burning bush, amen, that wasn't consumed, but we know that um, as we uh, seek God and seek his face, amen, um, that it's some things that we encounter in life that um, that we must uh, bring before God and, and lay it at the feet of, of the Lord himself, lay it down um, that we may pick up the cross and follow him. The Bible says, deny thyself, pick up thy cross and follow him. Amen. And so we want God to rest in the sanctuary of our heart, meaning that we give ourselves as the temple, our temple, amen, born again, blood washed, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, amen, for the forgiveness of sins, that our vessels, amen, may be presented unto God, holy and acceptable unto the Lord himself, amen. And so we thank God for his mighty word and his purpose, amen. And so we want to go to the book, amen, of uh, uh, Exodus, amen. We're going to go to the book of Exodus, amen. And we're going to jump around a little bit in Exodus, amen. But we want to start at, at uh, Exodus 3 and 9, amen. 3 and 9. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of Israel, the, the cry of the children of Israel is come on to me. 
And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, as we know, as God has given us power, uh, amen, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says, after that which the Holy Ghost come upon you, in Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power to bear record, amen. And so when God is resting and ruling and abiding in the sanctuary, amen, uh, of our heart, amen, the sanctuary where, where we offer up ourselves, amen. Uh, uh, and when I say sanctuary, I'm not saying that, that we are the holy place, but God uh, creates in us a clean heart and renews the right spirit, making us holy onto him, making him be able to dwell in the tabernacle of our heart and making him to be low Lord, amen, and Savior, amen, over this vessel, this temple, amen, and so we thank God, amen, for the blood, amen, we thank God for the, the washing away of sins, amen, because without God washing away the sins, God can rest and abide in us, amen, uh, God can't rule, oh God, and, and he can't rule over us, amen, and so in the book of Exodus, we're talking about uh, uh, when 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 God uh, told uh, Moses that 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 he was going to send him to the Pharaoh, and we understand that in in the in the world today, there's still many Pharaohs, amen, uh, rulers, uh, spiritual wickednesses in high places, amen. There might be a Pharaoh at, at your work, maybe a Pharaoh at your your school it may be a, a pharaoh amen uh uh driving down the street i mean and so pharaohs basically oppose the the will of god as you can see uh they 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 are rulers amen uh in egypt and i'm not just saying uh pharaoh as specific but the pharaoh changed just like the president changed because death wouldn't allow him to uh rule uh forever amen and so uh the, the bible says that they oppressed amen the children of israel amen and so god God had called Moses, amen, to go back and to speak uh, to the Pharaoh, amen, and so it, it, the sanctuary, amen, and the sanctuary of our hearts, amen, uh, God goes in, and the Bible says, how can a strong man be bound unless a stronger than he uh, basically shows up and first binds the strong man, amen, uh, a strong man can be considered a Pharaoh uh, in our hearts, amen, uh, uh, where we have a uh, I, I, well, we have idolized some things that's contrary to the word of God, and and God is is this God is the one that is stronger than He, Amen. The Bible says, um, uh, "Greater is He that's within you than He that's in the world," Amen. And so we know often we know that the word of God says that the pharaohs were uh, rulers and taskmasters, Amen, over the children of Israel. It uh, opposes the word of God, and it also at the same time oppress the people of God, amen, and so we can deal with demonic affluence, influence that opposes, amen, the word of God in our hearts, in our minds, uh, uh, that we go through and encounter on a day-to-day -day basis, amen, and so I thank God uh, for, for sending, amen, uh, us, amen, as, as, as Moses and as Joshua, but with the spirit of the living God, just like he had sent the apostles out, amen, the, the, uh, Moses and Joshua was the old dispensation, but we see in the apostles that they deal with the same oppression, amen, they deal with the same, uh, sufferings, they deal with the same conflict, amen, uh, going out and preaching, uh, bringing good tidings, not just to the people, but telling, uh, Satan to let the people go, amen, and, and and so we're flowing as God flows, amen, come now therefore, amen, in verse 10, 3 and 10, come now therefore, I will send thee unto the Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt, and Moses said unto God, who am I, that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should go bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Now, now Egypt is considered a place called the wilderness. Amen. The Bible says that the seed is the word and the field. I mean, the seed is the word and the field is the world. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, thank God uh, for his word. Amen. I'm going to find that in scripture. I always like to find it in scripture. Amen. Uh, uh, thank God. Amen.
bear with me a second. In Matthew 13 and 38, the field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are people of evil ones, of the evil ones. 39 says, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of ages and the heavens and the harvester are the angels. Amen. Um, and then I'm going to read it again uh, in the King James Version. The field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. And, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemies that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And I'm just giving you two different references. But thank God for us being uh, the seed, the one that plants the good seed. Not that we can plant the good seed, but the seed belongs to the Lord. Amen. Uh, 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 the, 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 the word is God's. It's not ours. Amen. We, we're, we're not planting anything uh, because if we plant anything, uh, uh, as you can see with Cain, bring back his harvest, uh, bring back what, what he had uh, harvest to bring back as an offering unto God, it wasn't acceptable. Amen. Because it was of the ground. Uh, and we see Abel, who was a keeper of sheep. Or, uh, we see him as, as 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 the one who brought back something that was pleasing to God, of a, of a living stock. Amen. And so we are called, amen, to go back out into the world. Amen. To go back out and speak to the pharaohs. Amen. In people's lives. Go back out and speak to those taskmasters, amen, who oppose and afflict and oppress the people. But Moses here is, is operating out of fear. The Bible says that Moses said, who am I? Hallelujah. Uh, when you when you know that you're called, that doesn't mean that you're able to go right away. Why? Because you still have some questions that you ask God. Amen. And, and so uh, God searches over the heart of a man. The Bible says that he searches the heart. A man look at the outward appearance, but God searches the reins of the heart. Amen. God sees what's in the heart of a man. Amen. And so we know that God is a God that's a purifier, a consuming fire, as he appeared onto Moses as a burning bush, in a burning bush as a consuming fire, yet the bush was not uh, burned. It wasn't consumed. It wasn't, uh, 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 it wasn't done away with. Amen. Um, and so, uh, we see, uh, here we go. We, and, and, and here we go. We're going to go back down to, uh, Exodus, uh, three and 11. And Moses said unto God, Moses is having a dialogue with God. Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel and he says, certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I sent thee, when thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and, say, and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto thee. And they shall say to me, what is his name? Come on now. What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And so people, when they, they, they trying to figure out who is this God that you serve that sent you to talk to them and speak to them. And this is when the gospel of Jesus Christ come into effect. Amen. This is when the gospel of I am that I am. Uh, when Jesus said before Abraham was, I am am. Amen. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we understand that Jesus was not yet in the world. Jesus was not yet crucified, but he had been there all along. Amen. He he is God himself. Amen. And so Jesus just give you a little a portion of who he is in the beginning. Amen. Uh, uh, he says, this is what Jesus has said. This is what the Lord himself said. What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. Hallelujah. And he said, and he and he said, "Thus shall thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has said on said has sent me unto you." And God said, "Moreover unto Moses, thou sh thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you." 
This is my name forever. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That 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 is his name forever. Amen. And this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the children of Israel. Uh, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. Hallelujah. And and so, and so, and so, uh, uh, when we look at the passage here, when we go out and preach the gospel, that, that the people that are opposed in, 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 in opposition, in, op, in opposition of, 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 of the will of God, meaning that they're standing out, outside the will of God and, 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 and it's the, 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 the word, the Bible says the enemy, um, um, who sows the evil seeds, who sows seeds of discord has opposed them. And so, uh, it be a wall, amen. And that's why we talked about Yesterday, it'd be a wall um, between um, God and man. And, and then it says what the sanctuary, what we call uh, what was a sacred place and a, 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 a holy place and a profound place. Amen. And and so being profound, amen, uh, uh, meaning that we are not in, in God's will. Amen. Uh, we are destitute, to, I mean, destined to destruction, uh, doomed, amen, as the word of God says. And so uh, here it is, God is speaking with Moses to go and tell the people that I am has sent me to to, to, to bring you up out of the land uh, of, of Egypt, to bring you out of the uh, wilderness into the marvelous light, amen. Uh, uh, and oftentimes we ask God the question, well, who am I? I'm little James, I'm little such and such. And, and when, we, when we enter into his presence, amen, oftentimes having a grasshopper spirit, amen. But Jesus talked to Moses and talk, told Moses that, 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 listen, look, you ain't doing this work. Amen. God is uh, working through us. Amen. And, and so, and so the, the passage today where we're going, amen, is what is in your hand. Amen. What do you have in your hand? Amen. But, but we find that what we have in our hand is not that it's there because we place it there. It's there because God is working with what we have, what he has placed in our hand as he spoke to us in our vessels and allow our vessels, amen, to work effectually in his will, in his purpose, in his plan. And so God places the the the, the utensils, amen, because we are the utensils of God. God places strategic things in our lives, amen, to use for the kingdom's sake, amen, for the kingdom's sake, amen. And so, and we're going to go uh, down, amen, uh, back to verse 3 and 16, amen. It says, uh, Exodus 3 and 16, it says, go and, gather the Israel, the, go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out, amen, up out, come on, up and out, amen, of the afflictions of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and of the Hiv Hiv of the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken to thy voice and thou shalt come, you and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go, we beseech you, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to 
the Lord our God. And so what, what they were doing was they were going as a group, a collaborative body, and they were sacrificing, amen, unto the Lord, amen. They were sacrificing unto the Lord, amen, because they are people that are called to present sacrifices unto the Lord. That's why the, the Lord said, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Because the Lord said in the word, amen, without blood, amen, there is no remission amen there is no forgiveness of sins without without blood and 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 so and so uh and that's in the book of hebrews 9 and 22 and by law almost all things are purged with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission and so because we died in Christ and were born again by the name of Jesus Christ born into his will born into his plan born into uh the purpose of uh, uh the will that he has for us then we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So here it is. They were going out of Egypt into a place, three day, a three-day journey. They were going to make provision and a proclamation by being a caught-out people to go and present themselves, not themselves as we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, but they were going to make sacrifices on to God to claim that he was their Lord, their Savior, that he was the one that had the power in the sanctuary, the tabernacle, amen. He was the God. He was I am in their lives. He was the God of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a different God from in which the pharaohs had, amen. And so and so, uh, we know that the pharaohs opposed and 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 basically ridiculed him, or ridiculed them as a body, amen. Uh, in the name of Jesus, but we we know that the scripture says, and they shall hearken to the voice, and they shall come. You in verse eighteen, you and the elders of Israel, and unto the king of Egypt, and you shall say unto them, the Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us, and now let us go. We beseech thee three day journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. And I am sure that the king of Israel, hallelujah, will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand. Now, we already know that God delivered the people of Israel, amen, out of the hand of the Egyptians by a mighty hand outstretched arm. And so Jesus had already spoke and said, tell him my name is I am. Amen. I am that I am. And, but, but then, but, but the thing about it is we know that Moses talked with God face to face, but yet God had veiled himself, amen, in a burning bush. So he was talking to a consuming fire. But Moses asked the Lord, uh, oh, well, let me see thy glory. And the, the Lord said, I'll show you everything. I'll show you show you this and I'll, I'll show you that. But you will not see me face to face because the day you see, uh, no flesh can see me face to face and live. Amen. And so God passed by Moses and showed Moses his hind side. Amen. But, but, but back to the scripture. Amen. Uh, and I will stretch out my hand. Amen. And smite uh, Egypt uh, and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. But God's hand is mighty. Amen. And that's why I said, what's in your hand? Because God showed his, his God showed his power by the hand that he used with that out, that was outstretched onto those uh, in Egypt or onto those in, in the wilderness. And that's why the Bible says for the repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And see, this is one of our punchline. Repent, every one of you. Why? Because the kingdom of God is at hand. What are you saying? It's at hand. Literally, the kingdom of God is right there at the hand, amen, uh, of those that want to receive and believe in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God right now is at hand. Why? Because when we talked to Brother Larry the other day, when we speak and, and spoke a word to Brother Larry, the word was repent, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus. But another word, another way, look at it another way, uh, 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 repent. Because the kingdom of God is right on to you, is right, is this close to you. But all you got to do is repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 repentance is not a, a outwardly, amen. Uh, uh, we, I'm going to go there real fast. I, I got I to gotta, gotta leave here. The, the Lord is leading me somewhere else real fast for a hot second. Amen. But I want to go to, um, I believe it's First Peter. Amen. Come on, wherever you at. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. 
Amen. Amen. Give me a second here. Okay, here we go. And we're gonna start first Peter three and and, and nineteen, amen. Um Okay, first Peter three and eighteen. For Christ also has once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. This is when Christ speak to the when he went down to Shu for three days, and the Bible says that there was going to be a dispensation that was not of this foe that would come with him. Amen. Uh, uh, um, uh, and so he went and let the captive, he took captivity captive, amen, uh, and let, and let the spirits go that were bound before he came, amen, at before his, uh, uh descendant to the, or, or before he was, uh, three days in, in, in the Bible was called in the grave in Shaul, he, he took captivity captive, amen. Uh, he took the keys from the, uh, the kingdom of darkness, amen. Uh, and what we see right here, it says, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was of preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. The light figure unto even baptism doeth also now save us, not the putting away of the flesh, the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, whom is gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels, I mean, angels in authority and power being made subject unto him. And so this is why it's so important that, that when people say he sat down at the right hand of God, well, if you understand the scriptures, amen, when God said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, the Bible says that as many that are in my father's hand, there is none able to pluck them out because God sat upon the throne, amen, and God stretched forth his hand into the earth in order for us to see the manifestations of God's hand, amen, or God's power, God had to to wrap his hand in flesh, amen, for us and God to be among us, we seen him having a prepared body, amen, the Bible says that he prepared a body before me, he stuck his hand through the womb of Mary, amen, and came into the flesh, amen, but this was God's mighty hand, amen, this was God's outstretched arm, this was the hand of the living God, amen, and so God put his hand through the earth, amen, and we were able to see the manifestation of the right hand of God, the Bible says with an outstretched arm has he led us into uh, uh, the promised land, amen, and with an outstretched hand, it was mighty, the hand of God was mighty, and so we see God's hand, amen, come out from the throne, amen, God never left the throne, but God sent the spirit of the living God, when Jesus was came into the flesh, when, when Jesus was incarnated in a woman, we see God's spirit come upon him, and he said, this is my beloved, here we go, let watch this quote, in, in, in him, I am. This is the same God that talked about in Moses. And so we see manifestations of God in different miracle signs and wonders because God is in all places at all times. He's God. He, he doesn't have a limitation. Amen. And so we're going back to Bible. Amen. Let's bring it back to Bible. But here it goes. I mean, we are in Bible. Well, let's bring it back to the word, the scriptures. Amen. We see God saying that I am, God said unto Moses, I am that I am, he said. But here it is, Moses. Moses was fearful because, you know, he said, oh, I, I can't talk well. I, he, Moses had excuses of why he couldn't go and get the children and speak to the children, talk to the Pharaoh. Moses had excuses. 
But God said, when you become a living sanctuary, when you become a living sanctuary, that I rest, rule, and abide in you, that I'm giving you power, amen, what we said, power to get wealth. But this is the crazy part, and not crazy, but, but God said, that the minute that you come out of Egypt, I'm going to let you come out, and you're going to come out not just coming out to with power to get wealth, but I'm bringing you out with possessions from the wilderness that's ordained for those that will come after you that they also may know that it was the hand of God that brought you out, and he did not bring you out empty-handed. God brought you out with power, with a spirit of a sound mind, and, and with love, hallelujah. But he brought you out of Egypt, not empty-handed, amen, because that's the type of God we serve. If we're going to be opposed and going to be afflicted, amen, God is not going to bring us out with uh, profane items, amen. He's going to bring us out with, with things that belong to him that is good and and, 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 and not, I'm not saying good and pleasurable in the sight, but good unto us that, that we can still keep, amen. Uh, if you got a house in Egypt, doesn't mean you have to get well of it in the promised land, amen. Uh, hallelujah. I, I, I'm talking to somebody. I hope somebody is understanding what I'm saying. If you got a car in Egypt, doesn't mean you have to get rid of it in the promised land. He's not bringing us out empty handed. The Bible says the, uh, uh, that, 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 that he spoke to Moses and he said to Moses, amen. Uh, but every woman in verse 22, but every woman, uh, shall borrow of her neighbor and in her house, jewels and silver, jewels of gold and raiment, and your sons shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and you shall spoil the the uh, the Egyptians. Amen. You, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. I'm not going to just bring you out empty-handed, but sometimes we have to wait to, upon the Lord to see, amen, what it is that God is going to bless you with, but he's not going to bring you out empty-handed. He has something laid up in store for you, amen. Uh, uh, the Bible says in verse Verse 21, it says, and I will give the people, verse uh, uh, Genesis 3, I mean, Exodus 3 and 21, and I will give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Now, this favor ain't fair. This favor that we find even at our jobs, amen. See, you sometimes you 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 left your job, you didn't have nothing when you left. You you would uh, 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 you were grieving, you were messed up, but you you came out with integrity. You came out, hallelujah, buffed in, 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 in your continence, uh, 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 was greater than it was before you came out and you had to leave your ego, my God, at the place in which you came. You came out from your job better than you was when you went in. Hallelujah. You didn't come out empty handed. You came out, hallelujah, you're looking more like Christ. You came out bolder, wiser, stronger than you were when you went and started the job. Hallelujah. You came out, hallelujah, of Egypt. You came out of the wilderness. You came out of a place that God had called you from. Uh, 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 you came out of that place, hallelujah, better, hallelujah, than you were when you went in. Hallelujah. You came out, hallelujah, looking like, hallelujah, the old man, and you came out, hallelujah, with new wine skills, you came out fresh, with a fresh anointing, you came out, hallelujah, looking great, you came out refocused, and you refined, you came out, hallelujah, Mm, as it, it restarted, hallelujah, you, 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 when you was able to do it on your own, you didn't need God as much, but when God touched, hallelujah, Hallelujah. When God touched, when God allowed the hand of God, when God allowed the, 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 the hedges to come down and allowed, hallelujah, the, 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 the tempter, hallelujah, to touch my God, your finance, to touch your health, to touch your mental stability, hallelujah, to touch your mental health, to touch your body, hallelujah, hallelujah. You didn't come out empty handed, hallelujah. And so what's in your hand? What did you bring out with God? What, what did you, what did God bring you out with? Hallelujah. He brought you out, hallelujah, with something in your hand. He brought you out, hallelujah. Mm, thank you, Jesus. He brought you out. Ah, out of Egypt. The Bible says, uh, 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 the Egyptians, and it should come to pass that when thou go, you shall not go empty. What was in Moses' hand? Hallelujah. Just an average stick. But when God spoke to Moses' heart and let a Moses, allow Moses to see what he had in his hand, my God, when God allows us to see that at our uh that what's in our hand my god that's what's in our hand is 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 kingdom hallelujah when 
my God, when God allows us and understands and allows the word to marinate in us and we know what we have, that we are wise master builders, that we are in the name of Jesus, our kingdom builders, amen, that when we lay hands upon anything, it shall prosper. What is in the hand of the man and the woman of God? If you know, you know, but when you know that the word of God, hallelujah, is in your hand because it's coming out of your belly, and when it comes out of your belly, I'm, amen, it's a river of living water, hallelujah, and the Bible says whatsoever, not something, whatsoever that you put your hand to, it shall prosper, amen. So what is in the hand of Moses was great in the hands of Moses, but Moses had to realize that God spoke to what was in his hand, my God. Increase comes when God speaks to what is in your hand, amen. And so on one end, we see Moses, amen, uh, 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 running from what was in his hand, my God, sometimes we run from what's in our hand. We run from the anointing. We run, hallelujah, from the calling. We run, my God, from what God has crafted in in our hand. We run from it. Why? Because we were not ready to receive, but God had to let a Moses run from it. But then Moses had to realize that he had to come back and pick up what God, hallelujah, had put in his hand. My God, in the earth, it looks like, in the earth, it looks like, amen a snake or a serpent, but Moses had to take up what God called a serpent, hallelujah, when he threw it on the ground, amen, come on, Jesus, let me, let me stop preaching, amen, come on, bring it back to the word, amen, bring it back to the word, amen, Lord, 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 hallelujah, in Exodus 4, we're going to go to Exodus 4, and Moses answered and said, behold, they will not believe me, hallelujah, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, the Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thine hand? And he said, it's a rod, hallelujah. So Moses, my God, when he was called, he had something in his hand. And God said, what is in your hand? He got the, listen, the staff didn't come from God. The, the, the stick came from the earth, my God. But God said, I'm going to take what's in your hand and use it for the kingdom of God. I'm going to take what, what, what you had in the earth, hallelujah. I'm going to give you a double portion of what you have in your hand, my God. I'm going to turn it around for, for, for my name's sake, hallelujah. And you'll find favor in the sight of Pharaoh. You'll find favor, hallelujah. You'll find favor. Why? Because favor comes from God and not man. Hallelujah. God said you will find favor with me and with man, but I'm going to put the favor on your life. And then man will recognize that there is something about you. There's a calling. There's an anointing. There's a light. Hallelujah. That differentiates those. Hallelujah. That, 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 that is sacred. Hallelujah. That's, that's for God and, and those things that are profound. My God, we can find common folk anywhere, but there is something about Moses. There is something about Joshua. Well, there was something about uh, 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 there was something about Daniel. There was something about uh, 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 David. There was something about Hallelujah. The people that are called. There was something about brother that was baptized in the name of Jesus. The countenance of his 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 being had changed. My God, there was a, a awakening in his body. My God, there was something that God was going to use that was in his hand. Hallelujah. But we must repent in order for the things of the earth, oh God, to manifest in the kingdom. And what are you saying? God doesn't use things that 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 He calls uh, 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 unrighteous and unholy. But when we become holy in God, God can stretch His hand into our body, Amen. And we become the workmanship of His hands, Amen. So what is in your hand? And we're not talking just about natural hand, but the spiritual hand of God was found, Hallelujah, in the womb of Mary. And when it came out, it was wrapped in the flesh, and we begot. All the glory of the Father through the Son and the works that he said he did. He said, I do not on my own, but with an outstretched hand and an outstretched arm. Hallelujah. These works are coming to pass. Men are healed at the laying of, of hand. What is in your hand? My God, what do you have in your hand? Hallelujah. And and, and so we're going to go back to scripture. Amen. Uh, praise God. I, I'm excited about God. Amen. I'm excited about God. And Moses and Answered, hallelujah. Behold, they will not believe me. Hallelujah. They won't believe me. Hallelujah. They ain't going to believe James. They won't believe the prayer line. They, but my God, hallelujah. When the prayer line 
rises up, hallelujah, and goes back to the doctor, and, and the doctor can't explain how are you still here, how are you still alive, the the blood, hallelujah, the remission, uh, there, there is no remission, my God, there is no no remission, hallelujah, remission, hallelujah, and I'm going to go here for one second, remission means uh, the cancellation of a debt, a charge, or a penalty, yeah, 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 you, you should have been dead, but your, your cancer went into remission, you should have been dead, but, but your blood pressure came down right on time, yeah, 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 your stick was blocked, but the blood allowed, hallelujah, the blood to flow. The blood allowed the, the blood to flow. Hallelujah. You you got into a bad accident and, and you should have been pronounced dead at the scene. But ah, the blood causes, the remission causes uh, the car to cease and stop right on time. My God. The blood caused the enemy's hand to stop right on time. The blood caused uh, the debt of your sin that you committed in your former life uh, to be blotted out forever because what was in God's hand was a writing uh, utensil. And God spoke and said, let this word come out, but let this part be sealed up, hallelujah, until the day of redemption, hallelujah. But the, the books will be brought out at the end, hallelujah. But 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 the thing about it is the Bible says, I will not blot your name out of heaven, will not blot your name out of the book of the Lamb, amen. And so uh, we find in Scripture that Moses ran from what was in his hand. But the thing about it said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. It's at hand. That means the word of God is at the hand of your reception. You have to grab it and receive it, amen. What's in your hand? Hallelujah. What's in your hand? What's in your hand? I want you to. I want you to marinate on that. What's in your hand? What? What? What did God place in your hand? What did God put in your hand? Hallelujah. And the Bible goes down to verse uh, 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 Exodus three, and He said, "Cast it on the ground," and He cast it upon the ground. And it became a serpent. My God. Mm. The Bible declares that Moses had lifted up a mist. The son of man shall be lifted up just like the serpent was lifted up by the hand of Moses. Now, this is the, now I just want you to get this. I need you to get, I need you to grasp this. Amen. And it became a serpent. And Moses fled from before it. Now watch this. In order to get what you need to get to God, you have to go through the serpent in order to receive from God. Now you're saying, why do I have to go through the serpent? Because the serpent, well, watch this, the serpent, amen, is the one that keeps us away from God. Hallelujah. The serpent caused Adam and Eve to sin and God put them out because they listened to the word of the serpent. Come on, catch it. In order for us to get through what we need to get through, we must come out, hallelujah, from the serpent, not flee from it, but stand against it, stand opposing it. The Bible says, resist the devil, submit thyself unto God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. So in sometimes, I mean, in, in, in this incident, we have to go through the serpent and not be afraid of him being able to look like he's able to bite us because the Bible says we shall trample upon serpents. Amen. What's in your hand? What are you saying? That in the world, it looks like a serpent. But when we use our hand and God's word speaks to our hand, my God, hallelujah, we are able to take up that serpent, to take up any deadly thing, and it shall by no means hurt us. So we have to be able to persevere through the, the eyes of the serpent, be able to push him out the way, be able to speak to the serpent and say, serpent in the name of Jesus, the Lord rebukes you. Hallelujah. The word, the, the word said that you were cast down. Hallelujah. And we understand that Moses first had to take what his hand and cast it down to the ground. That means he had to take what he had in his hand and Throw it down, hallelujah. Why did he have to throw it down? Because in the spirit realm, the serpent, amen, is not allowed in the place where the sacrament of the sacraments of God shall dwell. The serpent is not allowed in the presence of God. Hallelujah. He was cast out 
of the kingdom. Amen. And so we know that when we, we, we go into the world or go into the wilderness, amen, it's going to be some things we have to pick up and move to the side. Amen. It's going to be some people we're going to have to pick up and take to the house. We're going to have to go through some nasty homes and some smelly things in order to get to the soul. Come on, God. We got to get to a place where we're not afraid of the thing that's on the ground. The serpent was on the ground, but when Moses picked up that serpent, amen, it became something powerful in his hand. What are you saying? When we pick up those people and they don't look like us and smell like us, act like us, treat us like we want to or think that we should be treated. Oh my God. But when God gets them in his hand, mm, but it takes our hand to not run from the thing that's on the ground. My God, it takes our hand to not run from the things that look like God can't use them. It takes our hand, hallelujah, and I am that I am, uh, to really allow us to uh, uh, ac accumulate, uh, accumulate growth in the spirit that we won't look at the things that's in the world as if they are not sacred and, and, and able to be used by God. It takes us, hallelujah, not to run from the calling, not to run from the gift, hallelujah, not to run, but to cast down. Moses had to cast down the rod, but he had to cast down the imagination of his heart, thinking that he wasn't equipped, hallelujah, wasn't equipped, amen, to do what God has called him to do. But when he cast the rock down, when he cast down the, the, the rod, what we find is the rock turned into a serpent. Now, this is a miracle, a sign and a wonder, but I want you to see it in the spiritual realm. What God was saying, that the serpent, hallelujah, the serpent uh, is subject to, to the thing that has it by its neck. My God, hallelujah, the serpent is subject to the thing that, that, that God has allowed God has allowed to, to have it by its neck. Hallelujah. Moses had the serpent by his neck. It was a rod in his hand, but it was a serpent on the ground. Hallelujah. When we put uh, the strong man, uh, hallelujah, in a stronghold, hallelujah, the strong man has to submit on to the mighty hand of God. But 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 I'm going to go back to passage in scripture, amen. Uh, thank God for his word and thank God uh, for his truth, amen, mm, we we thank God, amen, we just, just want to bless God on today, amen, I won't be before you long, but but uh, I, I thought I was going to teach today, but I guess the Lord is leading me to, I guess, I guess we're going we gonna, to we gonna preach and teach today, I guess, God, that's what you're doing, that's what we're doing, uh, in Genesis, I mean, in Exodus 4 and 4, it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand, and take it up by its tail, hallelujah, Mm. See the tail, he said he made you the head and not the tail. So don't even bother with messing with the head of the serpent. Go on and take him up by his tail. Hallelujah. Because the poison is in the venom. The venom is in his mouth. If you take him up by his tail, all he can do is try to turn around and bite you. But you're but when you take up a serpent by his tail, you have the power to watch his head the whole time. My God, I'm going to go somewhere else with that, hopefully, if God takes me there. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand, hallelujah. Listen, put forth thy hand and take it up by itself. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod, hallelujah, hallelujah, in his hand. Mm. When God gives you vision and purpose and a plan, it becomes powerful when we take it in our hands. The gospel of the son of man that was coming was prophetically preached. But when Jesus came and demonstrated what he had in his hand, hallelujah, it became profound. It became, uh, 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 it, it, it was, it was, no words for it. Ain't no word for it. it they, we can't even equivalent, uh, uh, make a word equivalent to what God did. Hallelujah. When he came. And we see the lives of men changed. Amen. We see people. Hallelujah. Different. We see people that were once full of darkness. 
now they're shifting into a whole nother atmosphere. We see people that were bedridden to death alive in a well. Hallelujah. It's the power that God has given us in our hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is the crazy part. That the Pharaoh had magicians too, amen. And I'm going to go there for one second. But in order for we to see the manifestation of the power of God, the Bible says when Moses cast down the stick, it became a serpent. And the magicians performed and seen that they had serpents too. But the thing about it was, is that when they looked around, the rod had eaten up the other serpents. The rod in his hand will eat and devour the destroyer when it's in the right hands. So don't despise the things that's on the ground. Because Moses had it in his hand. It was a rock. And sometimes men have to be cast to the ground. Cast down. The Bible says that God exhausts those that are humble and cast down those that are haughty. Sometimes God has to, to, to cast us down to the ground. But yet we're still in his hands. And when we are in the right hands, the hands of God, amen. I, I don't know where God's taking me today, but when we are in the right hands, the hands of God, God is going to work it out for our good, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible declares. In Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. We're the workmanship of his hands. God is the masterpiece. I mean the master over the masterpiece. And we might not look like we always are walking totally with God. But just know that the master knows where every lost sheep is. The master knows every heartache, every pain, every upset. The master knows what he has in his hand. And this is the thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave this alone. I'm going to close out. Amen. Thank God for the Bible study. Amen. Um, I'm going to go here. I want y'all to take this to heart. What's in your hand? And who hand are you in? Come on, Jesus. The Bible declare in John 10, 28 and 30, and I give unto them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them to me, or gave them to me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Mm, I'm going to let that resonate. No man is able to pluck them out. No man, you can call a man this and call a man that, look down on him. But when he's in the father's hand, hallelujah, he might have acted like the devil. He might have acted like one of those serpents off the ground. But because he's in the father's hand, amen, he, he will be held accountable for his actions 
But as well, he's going to repent. Because when he has the spirit of the Holy Ghost, it will convict him to go back to his brother. The Bible says that if I offer when a man go to him and him alone, when you are convicted, you will call up that person and tell him you're sorry. Because out of love and kindness have I drawn thee. And the only way you can draw something back to its original origin is you got to go back to it and put it right back in place. What are you saying? It might not work. It might not be a relationship that, uh, that's going to rebuild at that present time. But put your gift on the altar. That gift is called forgiveness. Just the same way God said, if you don't forgive those, I will not forgive you of your sins. Amen. But thank God for the renewing of the spirit. Amen. Thank God for the new contract when we become new in him. Thank God that he's not done away with the Old Testament, but it's fulfilled in the law. And the Bible says if we have love and love, amen, uh, love and we, if we do all these works and have not charity, have not love, how you like a clanging brass, we ain't, we just make a lot of sound. But when you love somebody, you'll go back and repent to them and you'll repent before God that your sins may be forgiven, amen. Um, love you to life. Just know that God is working something out. You have something in your hand, a gift and a calling. Don't run from the gift, nor run from the calling. No matter how it looks, no matter the situation or the circumstances, remember God rests, rule, and abides in our sanctuary, amen. It's a dwelling place for God, hallelujah. So clean it up, get rid of the stuff that God hates. The Bible says hate what God hates and love what God loves. Get rid of the stuff that God can use you mightily in his hands because we're in the master's hands, amen, we're in the father's hands, and he puts something in our hands, and we must, as the biblical, uh, biblical says, he gives us talents in our hands, and we should bear much fruit. God bless you, and I love you to life. Just know that God has placed something in these hands. And God uses these hands that we have because we are one with him and him with us. The Bible says, I will come into you and set with you and you shall set with me. So being one with our husband and us being the bride, we are one in the name of Jesus. So God bless you. Love you to life. Amen. Father God, as we watch, as we leave this place, God, not your presence, God, let you go with us. Let the word, oh, Father God, meditate in someone's heart. Let it touch, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, let your word, oh, God, resonate in our hearts today, Lord. Lord, 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 search us over. If you find any iniquity, any darkness, anything that's unlike you, anything that you hate, pluck it out of us, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. We repent now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Say, why are we repent? Because we must repent every day, amen, from things that we know we've done and things that we that we don't know we do. So, God, forgive us our sins and our transgressions. Make us new in you. We forgive our debts, oh God. I mean, we forget our uh, we forgive our debtors as we, oh God, seek to be forgiven as well. Lord, we love our neighbor as our friend. We love our enemy as our friend as well. Oh God, bless them and keep them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Bless those, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. In the land of the living today, Lord God, touch our pastor and NCLC, God. Continue, oh Father God, to cover her and keep her right now in the name of Jesus. In her right mind, doing the thing that you've called her to do. Oh, Father, to go out and make disciples in your name as you've given us the spirit of truth and holiness and our righteousness. God, we bless your name, God. We lift your name on high, Lord. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We bless you and thank you as we go out of your prayer. I mean, out of, out, of, out of each other's presence, but not out of your precious presence, God. Go with us, Lord. We need you on a day-to-day -day basis, every hour, every moment, every second. Be our Lord and our Savior again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.